So uh, you have talked about a lot of different strategies, uh, how to incorporate learn authenticity. Uh, and a lot of our viewers are also uh, teachers. So if uh, I have to, and it becomes difficult, you know, to incorporate all of these strategies all together. So if I have to tell them three uh, key strategies to keep in mind when they are creating any learning content, what would they be? Like I can think of one that make your learners do a lot of activities. You know, it should mm. be, as you said, yeah, it should be interactive. Yeah, so if you are having your uh, designer as a teacher, mm. maybe you can opt for blended learning. Where your teacher, like I said, if a facilitator is present, mm. then you can have instructor-led training or blended learning. If a facilitator is absolutely not present, mm. then you go for web-based training. Or you go into different things where a person cannot be there with you. Right. So if your teacher is there, yeah. then maybe you can opt for blended learning. Mm. So within that, now you have your audience in front of you. Mm. There itself, you can do so many other things. There are so many activities which you can do in class. Mm. You need not wait for uh, you know all your status to come up later when they finished everything. Correct, correct. You need not wait for that yeah. much. So there are so many practices which you can take in for blended learning. Mm -hmm. I think that would be the best bet with teachers. And if whatever content that they are creating, what are the key things that the teachers should keep in mind? Yeah, so for teachers, I, one thing which I can suggest is now depends upon what uh, what are you teaching. Is it right. engineering? Is it science? Is it math? So in that, what I can say is now your students will definitely work somewhere. Right. So what you can do is maybe give them relevant examples. Like when I refer to as scenarios, you can give an example where they are possibly going to use this. Okay. Because if you are learning it, you are definitely going to use it somewhere. Right. So when you give scenarios, make sure it's relevant to them. Designing stuff you can do anyways, with the text and graphics, all that you can do. But when you create scenarios, don't give generic things. Because since you are a teacher, you are very well versed with your knowledge as well as where possibly you can apply it. Mm -hmm. So then you can go ahead and find that out and include those. Because your learners will be able to relate to it because they've just learnt it. Mm -hmm. And later on it will only may be more useful to them. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're going to apply it. Right. So it will be much more easier for them later when they start working. Uh, moving on to the design process. So uh, what is the design process that you follow in industry uh, when you have to create an e-learning content? Yeah, so basically if you uh, see how e-learning products get developed in the industry, we generally try to follow an agile model. By agile, I mean something that is iterative and also it works in short cycles and fast. So basically we use a successive approximation model. It is referred to as SAM, an abbreviation. So in that basically what I'll give you why we are adopting this model. So instead of a waterfall design wherein you have certain steps and you go from step 1 to step 5 one after the other and then you have a closure. But what happens within this is if you have a client who is later going to come back and say no you know I wanted to change something there you go back to step 2 and go change it. Mm -hmm. But you have teams working. Mm -hmm. Now your graphic team is going to work separately. Your technical team is going to work separately. You are a designer who is linking everybody mm -hmm. and you have an SME who is sitting on top of you. Yeah who is going to give you further content right. and there are managers who are going to push you for you know your deadline. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you have trouble from all sides. Yeah. Now in that if you have to go to one step and change it, life is be very very miserable. Yeah. So in that if you have small prototypes, in SAM what we do is we have three cycles in which there is a preparation phase, there is an interactive design phase and lastly there is interactive development phase. So basically these are short cycles. The idea is, is that you first create prototypes. Don't go into creating the entire thing and then sending it to the client. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Instead of that, create small, small prototypes because you have to first freeze the design. You speak to your client, speak to your SMEs so that they freeze the content first. You can have small changes. Editing is okay. But if you have to make a big change, then it's a problem. So you have to first create small prototypes of your design, give it to your client, you can iterate it there as much as required. So in the background, if you see on the screen, in the preparation phase, you first gather all information that they can give. Sit with that, you know, all your information gathering session, 
first brainstorm hmm. come out with all possible ideas that you can think of to create a design once you are done with that then you go to the interactive design phase when you come to design now you have your project managers also who will brief you about the budget and time hmm. now why am i emphasizing on budget and time it is because all of this has to get completed you have a certain deadline you cannot go on for eternity yeah. you know going on uh, in thinking thinking and creating and making you cannot do that mm -hmm. you have to deliver it yeah. now within delivery there are so many iterations which have to complete you have to get a heads up from your client as well as sme your sme has to say okay for the content that this is sufficiently concluded like i'm okay mm -hmm. and then your client can say a uh, sign off for this so basically what we do is first design we don't go to development it's not going to get developed no tools no software nothing mm -hmm. just sit down with your design and talk to your clients have calls with them and first only freeze the design give them multiple designs small small prototypes and by small i mean seriously small simply an idea and if they like one then you build a small prototype show them do you like this then we'll create more so when you talking about this design i know at the storyboard phase correct so every visual that's going to come at every screen you first design that sure. yes but an idea of it now when you create a storyboard you don't create the entire storyboard okay. like you create the first 5 to 10 slides okay and show it to them okay if they don't like it there only they say that you know this is not okay i just don't like it i don't have a reason okay i don't like it it's like color black or blue i don't like blue mm -hmm. there's no reason for that so there is no content involved here yet content is given by your sme already so there are two people here right. within your client you have your sme also and you also have one more person who would be along with your sme signing this off mm -hmm. your sme is a part of it mm -hmm. but an sme is in charge of your content specifically okay. so technical stuff for example if you are going to speak about factories mm -hmm. or if you are going to speak about soft skills mm -hmm. we are not experts on that mm -hmm. somebody else is mm -hmm. so they will say this much content is sufficient Right. don't go ahead of this and don't go into too much basics mm -hmm. that they know right. so they will be telling you what is to be covered now how it is to be covered is with you right. how you cover it right. so you give them the first 5 to 10 slides and say i am going to present your content we have begun with this much this paragraph and we think that these 10 slides will take care of it now this is your design see if this makes sense to you mm -hmm. and we'll have a call with you let's discuss it for this paragraph i think this much is sufficient mm -hmm. now let's just discuss it and get their idea sometimes they give good ideas that they will tell you ki why it is not cool or maybe they just say excellent you know we'll proceed okay. like create the entire thing okay. and once your design is approved then you go into development because it's an entire team effort mm -hmm. and they also have timelines because they are working on multiple projects when you have a client facing company a technical team is dealing with lots of projects you know your project is not the only one it's one of their million things that they do <laughs> so in that you have to seriously block their time yeah. and tell them in this much time you complete this uh -huh. and again if you create errors in this i'll have to block more time uh -huh. so this time blocking things happens so it's okay you have to live with it yeah. and also your graphics freeze the graphics after your design is done again talk to your sme show them the graphics and say that i think this is good you see if it is good because sometimes our understanding of the technical content may vary from what the sme thinks and they are the final word because we only understand design technical stuff accuracy your sme will tell you mm -hmm. so what if they say this uh, visual looks cool we'll proceed but get it approved freeze the graphics don't keep it till development mm -hmm. because there again you're going to come back and your graphics Absolutely. team is going to get annoyed with it mm -hmm. so and graphics team also works with million projects at one time mm -hmm. so you have to block one one designer mm -hmm. over there graphics person who is going to help you out mm -hmm. so again and again you cannot keep yeah. doing this yeah. so when your design is freezed finally you give it to the technical team they will code it comes to you for a review you find bugs in it and again give it back to them then it will go for final testing all this is in iterative cycles if you see the screen you will see alpha beta gold so these are three stages in which we deliver the product so alpha meaning the first stage mm -hmm. that is the first stage in which we created one product delivered it delivered it to the client okay. 
in that all possible errors that they can find but now no change in design now mm-hmm. in the product if they think that something needs to be seriously added mm-hmm. they can tell it mm-hmm. or if they want certain things to be changed then that will be done in beta but when gold is signed off no further change mm-hmm. so then that gets uploaded on an lms and finally just sent off that is all your budget and everything is done it's closed then next project so we undertake this agile method of developing products instead of a waterfall design this is always much more better life is way more simpler so the learning learner centric element is coming to picture in the first design uh, process itself right and then they go to the uh, client and if they have any suggestions they give and then in the final uh, design the elements go they forward will, yeah they'll be they retained will be because in your design phase if the client is not convinced but if you are convinced as a designer that mm-hmm. this is cool, you have to include this mm-hmm. otherwise my entire like whatever i have thought of it doesn't make sense mm-hmm. i really need to include this then you defend your design and they understand it is just that they don't have a design background mm-hmm. they just know it's like your teachers they don't have a background in design they just know their content that's it mm-hmm. they don't understand design at all so you are the expert in that you have to defend what you created okay. uh so you just talked about a uh, sequence of process as this agile method so what kind of resources which will be required to do this considering an id with a limited resource yeah so like i said all of your work is tied to timelines and budgets and also you have reporting people you are answerable always not only to your clients but even to your managers to your team because suppose you are leading a team here when we say id is restricted with uh, you know limited resources we also include teachers yes i am taking everybody, everybody yeah. as an when i say yeah. designer i mean anybody seated on that seat yeah. irrespective of their background yeah. yeah. i am taking anybody who is seated there to create an e learning product mm. so for that basically you have to keep in mind that you are answerable for multiple things and if you are leading a team you are answerable even more because if your team doesn't work or if they have glitches they have road blocks you are going to answer that your team is not going to answer because your client will ask you why this is not done they are not going to go and ask your team so you should make sure that you are always in sync so have regular meetings like um, every week or every two weeks maximum where if you can call it a scrum or you can call it a quick you know check checkpoint for your entire team and make sure everybody is on the same page if people are having trouble somewhere you make sure that it is solved it is resolved there itself any technical support that they require if licenses are getting expired or if sometimes people leave the company or new people join in licenses need to be transferred all of this admin stuff it takes time yeah. it is going to affect your time so make sure that you know you are aware as the leader or as one of the members of your team make sure that you can take care of this and another thing is you be very strict in adhering to your timeline you as a person your team of course is there but you as a person you are already aware of what is the sign off date for alpha what is the sign off date for beta final sign off date for gold you are already briefed so you make sure that you are always within that if you feel that no you know i am not you are going to achieve this this is not happening you go and report to your manager tell him or her why this is not happening give them your i know answers for it it's okay so they have further discussions with your client mm-hmm. and they brief them that we can push it ahead a little all these negotiations happen but if you tell it in the last minute that tomorrow is the date and i can't do this then it's it's not good professional behavior you make sure that you keep everybody informed and as far as possible try and reuse graphics because your team is working very hard mm. so instead of creating graphics new new graphics again and again and again you try and see if you can reuse some of them mm. because as a designer this was also thought of right mm. somebody thought of this so see if you can you know maybe alter a few things don't create it from scratch try and tweak it a little mm. and then try and use it so have these little you know midways in which you can save on your time and your budget mm. and finally you can just deliver it and create those small prototypes and see now suppose while working you come across a good idea 
and you think that you know this will make uh, you know stuff very fast mm. instead of sticking to one software which we have been using maybe this will work fast you create a small prototype and show it to your manager mm. and say that you know this looks fast mm. they are more than appreciating because they like this that you are coming with good examples good ideas and mm. they'll just incorporate it mm. life is fast simple and also quick training sessions like suppose you have you know gathered a good experience on certain tools you can just brief your entire team it takes like half an hour mm. and in just briefing them about uh, these few features are there they can always come to you for further help mm. but just to brief them quickly mm. maximum one hour mm. to brief them about the software mm. and once tell them to go and practice and if they need your help you're always there so it's always a team effort is what i can conclude right, right. so one of the questions that we often um, get is that can i do uh, creation of e learning as a one man team it yes you can but uh, your time would be a way lot more than a team working together and also the effort that you're putting in because you would be a one standpoint for creation of everything yeah. you won't have helping hands at all so yeah. right now when i'm working at debold mm. i have to do everything on my own take care of my project and you need to have those skills to do everything yes. on you you as a designer yeah. i will be very honest mm. you are expected to have these skills mm-hmm. so it is expected of you to have an understanding of graphics you are expected to under- have an understanding of software tools mm. which are used for development you cannot go blank yeah because if you go and sit there blank and say that i know only design i have created my design i'm just going to sit <laughs> now this doesn't happen yeah. because you know sometimes graphic people they come and tell you this is looking cool let's just use this mm. now you don't know whether you know your rest of the images were vector graphics yeah. and now suddenly you started using you know uh, different like character based graphics nothing is matching with either yeah. and sometimes you have already decided dimensions yeah. for certain reasons maybe you templateized it all of this if you are not familiar with now certain companies they very strictly adhere to rgb values believe me even for shades they have strict adherence to a shade you cannot change that shade wow so if you put a different number within rgb your entire screen is going to look very different than what the earlier screens were so if your 10 modules previously made were with a diff- one rgb value and you made one error of changing g somewhere mm-hmm. now your entire screen looks different and there are like 10 20 ids working now if everybody starts making errors mm-hmm. you imagine what the entire screen will look like and all modules one learner will be taking <laughs> so that poor person who is finally <laughs> taking this <laughs> will get something to very you know unpleasant to look at yeah. so that way you should at least try okay. okay okay so thank you for your description so we have been receiving requests from our teachers and faculty members who are taking the course about some open source tools or softwares that they can be able to use to get started creating their own content can you give some suggestions on that yeah so open source basically uh, for good co- e learning content development are not that much available but you get free 30 day trial sessions so i would say that if you want to try responsive design you can go for adobe rise so in adobe rise you can create responsive design and for adobe captivate storyline all of these you can use for creating e learning products wbt is definitely or blended learning you can decide and sometimes even uh, they use i spring within ppt like something as simple as ppt you can just take i spring it it's an add on mm-hmm. and within that you can create all kinds of interactivity and video scribe you can use for uh, i think telestrations are also possible mm-hmm. other than videos only camtasia is there only for videos so other than these i've given you an entire list you can just click on the url and you'll get a complete idea of all possible tools that exist i would say that take your first you know hand at it try it out if you don't like it move to the next and for videos you have lots mm-hmm. to take but for developing wbts you can just have to go through a 30 day trial okay. see what you like and what you're familiar with there are so many tutorials that are available and on adobe uh, its website itself so mm-hmm. many tutorials you can easily learn it okay 
um, anything else that you would want to convey to our learners what they should follow how they should go about making learner centric e learning content for your learners or for your designers our learners <laughs> should be our designers <laughs> okay. so uh, basically keep your audience in mind that is the most thumb rule which i will say because who is the person for whom you are making this now if it is a person who is a very senior guy is a ceo of a company you can't give him like you know kindergarten examples he's not going to read that mm-hmm. and maybe he'll fire you but he, if he's a ceo you have to give him something that's relevant for him and quick fast complete but as opposed to onboarding they are blank they don't know anything about your company you have to give them very detailed examples so that they understand what is expected of them mm-hmm. so keeping your audience in mind if you go into k12 education that has nothing to do with this mm-hmm. there are companies who work into k12 education in that it is all maths science chemistry physics all of that is there mm-hmm. they have nothing to do with soft skills or you know clients in that you make sure that you adhere to either their textbooks or whatever it is that they have freed that they want to cover this much mm-hmm. so make sure that you know your audience properly and within that also i would say that make sure you adhere to budgets and timelines mm-hmm. because if you don't do that your projects will you know just snag on for a long time and just screws everybody's mood yeah. so make sure you do that budget timeline audience <laughs> <laughs> So uh, in this session uh, Anura has uh, mentioned a lot of uh, learner centric strategies how to implement them uh, she has spoken about uh, how to increase challenges for learners while creating e-learning content uh, the use of active learning approach using real life scenarios and she's provided examples like use of gamification leaderboarding uh use of multimedia principles like personalization segmentation uh visual design principles uh how to make responsive design um uh, how to not force a navigation on learners and keeping it self paced providing feedback and making uh it interactive she has also mentioned about successive approximation method for the design process uh she has also provided some software tools uh, to get started with the design of the e-learning content and finally she has talked about the target audience budget and timeline which are the key aspects to keep in mind while designing the e-learning content so uh, most of these uh, aspects have been covered uh, in our course uh, but this is coming uh, from an experienced a uh, professional working in the e-learning uh, design uh, so this is uh, an industry perspective on these key aspects so we would like to thank anura for taking out time and coming and um, informing us about all this my so thank you my pleasure thank you